In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the lighting in your photos in Lightroom. Hi, my name is Klaus Hermann and you can meet me on farbspielphoto.com where we make your photography simple. Now in this tutorial, we're going to do something that seems impossible. We're going to change the lighting of an image after we've taken it. I will show you how to add lighting effects to selected areas of your photos to make them more interesting. To do so, we're going to use Lightroom's local adjustment tools. But before we get to the topic of today's tutorial, let me update you on my latest book project Unleash the Power of Lightroom Presets. Nearly 700 beta readers have signed up to get the manuscript and help me with the editing. I'm sending out a big thank you to all of you awesome beta readers out there. Now if you did not make it into the beta reader team, but you want to stay updated about the book and benefit from some exclusive discounts, sign up to our newsletter and I will notify you when the book is published so that you can get your copy even before it's officially released. You're going to learn a ton of new techniques that will transform the way you are using Lightroom. If you watched my last video tutorial, you already know this photo. And you know that it's a three-shot interior panorama that we stitched inside Photoshop and applied all kinds of adjustments and transformations to really make it perfectly symmetrical um, and create the perfect interior panorama. But as you can see, if you look at the floor, it's a bit dull and uninteresting here. There's not much going on, no great lighting on the, on the floor. The walls are great, there's shadow and light and uh, the lamps cast some really nice light on these walls, but we really have to work on this floor to make it more interesting here. And if you go to the develop module in Lightroom, you can apply a number of global adjustments, but none of these will actually lead to any um, lighting effect. So anything that you do is always applied to the entire image. In order to apply some interesting light to this floor, we're going to have to use the local adjustment tools. And you can find these tools in this toolbar just above the basic adjustment panels here. And the adjustments that we are interested in is the radial filter tool and the adjustment brush that you see to the right of this panel. Now first I'm going to add some radial adjustments. And when you click on the tool, a settings panel opens and you have essentially similar settings to the ones you have in the basics tab in the develop module plus some more simplified versions of uh, settings that you also have in the develop module, module for example the sharpness or the defringe slider here. Overall a much reduced uh, set of settings that you can uh, apply here but nevertheless this is a very powerful tool. So before we start, let me reset this panel. I'm going to do this by double clicking on the effect label up, up here and you see that all our settings are reset to zero. And now with the radio filter tool um, selected, I'm going to click inside the image and then drag out and you can see that we get this little ellipsis. And when I let go, I get a pin and I get some handles around the ellipsis um, that I can use to reshape this at any time. Now you see that not much has happened as I added this radial adjustment filter. Um, and the reason is of course that we've reset all our settings here. Now let me raise the exposure setting for example. And you can see when I do this, the adjustment is actually not applied inside the circle, but it's applied outside. And that's ob obviously the opposite of what we want. Now in order to, to um, solve this problem, you can tick the invert mask checkbox down here and Lightroom switches this around. It applies the effect to the inside of the circle. The second control that we have here for the radial adjustment filter is the feather slider. And if you move this all the way to the left, you can see that we get a, a circle with very crisp and harsh edges. If we move it all the way to the right, we get a very, very smooth transition. And that's what we're looking for because we want to add a spotlight effect on the floor. We want to add an effect that makes it look as if a lamp is shining on that spot, illuminating it and creating a nice contrast to the surrounding dark areas. Now I can play around with the settings. I can raise the exposure a bit more to um, 
make it look as if we have a light with more intensity. And if I do this, you can see that the inside, where the light is shining on, gets a bit, a bit washed out. In order to counter this, I'm going to use the clarity slider to add some mid-tone contrast. And you can see that some of the structure of the stone is coming back. And now this is essentially a back and forth between the different settings until you get a nice look. The, the third thing that you can do is to use the temp slider. If you pull that to the left, you get um, a more cool light, maybe a daylight um, colored light source. If you pull it to the right, you get a warmer light and you can obviously apply this depending on the nature of your image and the light that's already in the image to make it fit. I think a, a little bit warmer, let's say we, we push, we pull this to the, to 20, uh, is good for this image. Now, that's as easy as it, as it is. You can apply a radial filter and it looks like a spotlight on the floor and you've added some more interesting lighting effects here. Now I want to add additional lighting effects because we have additional lamps here. We have one, two, three, four lamps and I'm going to add a similar lighting effect to each of them. Now, as you've seen, you can right click on the pin and choose duplicate to create a duplicate of an existing um, adjustment here. And when you do this, of course, the two effects are overlaid because the second adjustment that you just, uh, just created is uh, created in the exact same spot as the existing one. Now I can just drag this to another position by holding down the shift key and dragging the handles inwards. I make sure that the proportions of the circle don't change. If I don't ha uh, push, uh, press the shift key, I can change the circle in any way. If I press the shift key, the proportions are going to stay the same. I'm going to fit this to the perspective of the floor that we have in this image here. And then I'm going to duplicate this again for the third lamp in this corridor. And again, I'm holding down the shift key, drag the handles in, inwards, correct the perspective a little bit. And then for this last one, I think it's a bit too bright here, so I'm just going to lower the exposure. We have some nice lighting effects. Maybe I can pull up this one a little bit more. And then to add the other lighting effects to the left and the right, I'm just going to duplicate this one again, move it here. And if you position your cursor right outside the circle, you get this little rotation um, cursor. If you click and drag, you can rotate it and then just shape it so that it looks believable in this position here. I'm going to duplicate this again for the right side. And I'm going to rotate this a bit. I'm going to tone this down because this is a bit too bright in comparison with the other three adjustments that we already have. And that's how easy it is. So you can just use the radial filter tool to add some spotlights to your image. Now the second thing that I'm going to do is use the adjustment brush in order to enhance the lighting effects on the, on the walls and also on the, on the floor. And the adjustment brush has the, the big advantage that it is not restricted to any shape like a circle or a rectangular or a, um, a gradient of some sort. You can just freely brush in your image to apply some adjustments. And to do this, I'm going to click on the adjustment brush tool. Again, I'm going to get the same settings panel as before. And when I uh, move down here, I see the brush settings that we have here. So up here we have this, the adjustment settings. Down here we have the brush settings. And you can see my cursor turns into a brush symbol. And I can change this using these sliders. I can change the size, of course. The feather uh, slider lets me create a harsh or a soft brush with a very smooth transition to the outside. And the flow value gives me a way of either, let me just set up an adjustment here so that you can see this. So if I turn the flow all the way to, to 100 and I brush on the image, 
all of this effect is applied immediately. Now let me undo this and set the flow value to a much lower value, 10 for example. And if I now brush, you can see that this effect is only very, very slowly building up. I really have to brush a lot of times over the same area in order to get some effect. Now, this is exactly what I want because this gives me maximum control over the way the adjustment is applied to the image. And that's what I want. So let me right click here and choose delete. And now I, I will use this adjustment. Um, maybe I decrease the size of the brush just a little bit. And what I'm going to do here is first of all apply some um, more darkness and more light to the uh, to the walls in this image. And I'm going to start with the darkening. I'm going to set a negative exposure here and then I'm starting to brush over the regions in the image where I think it needs to be a little bit darker. And these are um, predominantly the areas that are already dark. So actually I'm doing a little bit of dodging and burning here. But other than the um, than the global adjustments that, that we have, I have very fine-grained control over the way the adjustment is applied and the spaces, the, the, the spots in which they are applied. And so if I um, turn this off, so you can always turn off the effect uh, created by a panel using this little switch button here. If I turn this off, you see the before and the after. And it's it's quite subtle, but it adds some nice mood to the image. And you can also do this in opposite direction. Now I'm going to create a new brush adjustment, so I'm going to click on the new um, button here. And I'm going to raise the exposure in this case. And with the same brush settings, I'm going to work on the spots that are a bit lighter. Now everything that I brush on the image right now is going to, to be part of the same brush adjustment. It's only when I use this new button that, I, that, is, that you've seen up here that a new adjustment is created. And that gives you some control over the way the adjustments are applied in your image. So again, let me switch this off. You can really see the contrast has nicely been increased on these walls to give it some more interesting mood. To finish this image off, I'm going to give it one more local adjustment brush uh, adjustment. And I'm going to use this adjustment to pronounce these steps here a bit better. Because these are nice leading lines that lead the viewer into the image and really um, strengthen the composition of our image. So I'm going to go up to the settings panel here again choose a exposure of about two stops again. And then I'm just going to start brushing here to put some more light on these steps. This will brighten the really dark areas um, down here. And it will also brighten the steps themselves. I'm going to do the same thing here on the right side. Brighten the, the dark areas and also the steps themselves. And if I turn off this adjustment, you can see that we've got now got a very nice light on these steps that makes them much more prominent as leading lines. And this really gives us a, a, a very nice composition with leading lines. In this tutorial, you have learned how to use the radial filter tool and the adjustment brush in Lightroom to add light in places that are a bit dull and boring. As you've seen, I was really able to spice up the floor in our example image. In the original version, it was not interesting at all. And in the edited version, it became an essential element that actually strengthened the composition of our image. By adjusting the exposure, the color temperature and the clarity, I was able to achieve a realistic lighting effect. But be careful here. When you apply such an effect, you should not overdo it. 
because it can start looking quite unnatural quickly. If you want to learn more about photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, Photomatics and other tools, visit our website at farbspielphoto.com and sign up to our newsletter. My name is Klaus Hermann. Thanks for watching.